Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the Artist Assistant Training for the 2017 International Folk Art Market in Santa Fe. And thanks to all of you for signing up to be Artist Assistants. Uh, you are the largest team of volunteers at the market and really the heart of the market and what's happening there. So we're very grateful to you for giving your time to support the 150 artists who will come from more than 50 countries including Tanzania, Tajikistan, Argentina, and Jordan, which are all new countries at the market this year. So we have a couple of new things that we want to share with you uh, during this training. Um, and we want to cover some basic sales skills. And also there's a new concierge service this year. And so we're going to talk about the new process uh, for artist assistance for that. And I should say, uh, I should have said at the top, I'm Jennifer Billig. I'm the Associate Director for Community Engagement and Volunteers. And I'm here with Deborah Weinberg, who is a Regional Coordinator and also our Lead Trainer for Artist Assistance. And she's going to take you through most of the detail about your role as an artist assistant. So, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit more high level about your role as an artist assistant. And, you know, really, I think we all know that the artists are why we do this market. And so, really, their success in the booth is everything um, that the market is really about and the mission of the Folk Art Alliance is about. And so, there's a couple things I want to say to you about that because you're really essential to that success. The first thing I want to say is um, really endeavor to work as a team in your booth with the artist or the artist representative. They might have family members there. Um, with the interpreter, if you have one. And your goal is, of course, to sell artwork. And the best salesperson might be the artist or it might be the representative. It might be you, in fact, or it might even be the interpreter. So kind of see who's got what skills and then please work together um, to sell as much artwork as possible. You're also really trying to provide excellent customer service to the shoppers and provide a positive overall guest experience for them. And the most important part of your job is accurately writing out the sales slips. Um, nothing is more important than this. Last year, for example, and this is common, there are about $20,000 in errors from inaccurately written sales slips. And so Deborah's going to go through this process in detail, so please pay careful attention to it. Make sure you're writing them accurately. Your block captains will be checking in to make sure that everybody knows how to write them accurately. And if they ask, ask you to make an adjustment in how you're writing those sales slips, please follow their instructions because it is really very important. Um, the other thing you're doing is you're managing um, purchases and pickups <coughs> of packages. Um, and another quality we need you to have as an artist assistant is that you be flexible. Um, all the artist booths need to be covered. And so if someone doesn't show up or on Sunday afternoon when we tend to be short of artist assistants, we always have trouble recruiting for Sunday afternoon. Um, some of the booths may not have an artist assistant. So if you're in a booth with somebody else, you might be asked to move to help cover that booth. And so we hope you'll be flexible when the block captains ask you to do that. Um, and if you happen to be available to work a Sunday afternoon shift, please reach out to me um, at volunteer at folkartalliance.org. We really could use you for that Sunday afternoon shift. It's always the toughest one to recruit for. And it's also, given what I just said, I'm sure it's, it's clear to you that it's really important that you show up on time um, and that you work your full shift. We're, we're not sitting on like a secret pool of volunteers who can replace you if you're late um, or if um, you sneak out of your booth early. So it's really important that you work the full shift as written. Um, and you, you guys represent more than half of all the volunteers at the market, and you're really the ones that make the whole thing work. So there is you know, no more important role than artist assistant. So I want to talk a little bit about block captains, who are your partners um, in this important project of selling artwork. They will be wearing yellow aprons, um, and they're your go-to people for anything that you need. They are getting more training this year on everything that you're being trained on here, plus several more components to help the market run well. 
And they, this year, the block captains are all reporting to one of six artist assistant volunteer chairs who are, who are in charge of each block. They will also be in yellow aprons, so they may not be distinguishable to you, but just know um, that that is the structure change that the block captains are reporting to the artist assistant volunteer chairs. And you may hear from the volunteer chairs in the next couple of weeks via email introducing themselves to you um, as the person who will be in charge of your block for the weekend. Um, so work with your block captain uh, to get bathroom breaks, and also if you're working all day as an artist assistant, work with your block captain to get you a lunch break. Uh, the other thing I'd like you to know is that the volunteer hospitality team is also going to be delivering food to you in your booths this year um, in the middle of each shift, so please watch for them. Um, and it's going to be more substantive food like little sandwiches and carrots and grapes and um, other snacky stuff too. Um, so we know that you're you're kind of stuck in your booth for a long time, and so it's part of our effort to try to take good care of you as volunteers is to be delivering food, and the water team will be coming around as well. So if you are in your booth and you're expecting someone else to show up and replace you in the middle of the day, um, and they haven't shown up, please notify your block captain that you're waiting for someone who hasn't shown up. They will have schedules, but you know things get busy and crazy and things are happening. So if you're sitting there overly long, don't assume that they, they know that you're waiting. Um, please alert them to the fact that your replacement hasn't shown up. So I think that's all I want to say by way of overview. And now I am going to turn it over to Deborah Weinberg, who's going to cover... Um, a lot of the details, um, starting with some tips about selling. Thanks, Jennifer. Hi, this is Deborah Weinberg. Welcome, everybody. We're so happy you're joining us. It's great having all of you online today. Our artist assistant team is almost an incredible 800 strong. You are an amazing group of interesting, creative, adventurous, globally minded, generous, and caring individuals and I hope many of you will get to know each other at the market. Please grab a pencil and paper to take any notes you might need. Okay, so what do we do to make our beautiful market possible? First, let's do a brief review of important sales skills. All of you are the face of the market, working with both the artists and the public. Be open, friendly, and welcoming smile. It makes a difference and welcomes folks into your booth. Become familiar with the artwork in your booth. All of you already know which artist you are working with. Check out your artist type of work on the Folk Art Alliance website at folk, folkartalliance.org if you are not already familiar with it. You can enter your artist's name in the top search box, which will bring you to a profile of the artist and his or her work. When you get to your booth, you can also ask the artist to tell you their story, which is so important when you try to help sell their work. Practice a few short sentences that you can use to catch the attention of passing shoppers to draw them into your booth. Here are a couple of examples. This artist has a very unique way of weaving. Would you like to learn more about the process? Or, these gorgeous scarves are made by a hundred women in a cooperative in India. Would you like to take a closer look? Remember, people buy because they connect with the artist as well as with their work. So, Deborah, I just want to stop you quickly because there's something I forgot to do at the top, oh, which sure, is of to tell people that your way to ask questions on the webinar is that there's a question icon in the middle of your screen. And so if you do have questions, um, we will get to those at the end. And you can type them into that, that, that tool on the webinar, um, and we'll get to them when we're finished with all the, the slides and material. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Well, now let's take a look at what you will find in your artist's booth. All the booths will have a large plastic box that will contain the following. A flyer with directions for Friday setup and Sunday closing, sales books for writing up purchases, and several tablecloths for setup. 
In the large plastic box, there will also be a plastic sheet in case it rains, shopping bags for purchases, and green concierge flags, which we will describe later. There will also be a small plastic supply box that will have pens, stapler, paper clips, a scissors, small price tags with strings and stickers if needed, and a calculator for computing Sunday afternoon discounts and concierge customer totals, which we will tell you about in a little bit. This year there will be three large plastic baggies, not one, but three, for keeping the very important yellow sales slip. The bags will be marked Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's helpful to set up your sales slip area with a book of sales slips, a pen, a stapler, a calculator, and a pile of green concierge flags, all of which are in your booth box. Keep handy your small supply box with extra supplies and the plastic bag for the daily yellow sales slip receipts. On the ground next to you, you will have a couple of plastic bins for keeping customer purchases in alphabetical order. Let's turn now to filling out the sales slip, which you can see on your screen. There will be eight books of sales slips in each booth. Most of the books will be pre-printed with the booth number. This should save time and prevent omitted booth numbers. Some books may not have the pre-printed booth number, so be sure to write it in. Please do not borrow sales books from another booth. All books are assigned to a specific booth, even if they don't have a pre-printed booth number. If you need more than eight books, please go to the supply office next to the visitor center. Note that there are four colored slips, white, yellow, pink, and gold. How each is used is written on the bottom of the sales slip, so you don't have to worry about memorizing this. When a customer comes to your booth and picks out her purchases, she then goes to the artist assistant to write up the items. Please remember to press down hard when you write. First, you fill in the customer's first and last name. Write the first initial of the last name in the square. This is important because it's how the purchase will be alphabetized and organized before pickup by the customer. Then fill out the cell number, date and time of the purchase, Please write the artist's name next to the pre-printed booth number. Please note you should remind the customer that items will be held in the booth for up to three hours, after which they will be returned to inventory. Always ask the artist before returning an object to inventory. Sometimes the artists are willing to wait longer than the three hours. AAs will call the cell number if a customer doesn't return to check the status of the purchase. Please do not leave your booth until all packages are picked up or returned to inventory. Okay, now's the time to write up the purchases. Write the quantity and simple description of the purchased item. Check with the artist how they want it described. For example, one jacket at $58, one small wall hanging at $75, and one bed cover at $200. The price is always the unit price. When writing up multiple items that are the same, once again, use only the unit price. For example, five bracelets at $10 each, not five bracelets at $50. Then circle the line with the multiple and put a star on the top of the sales slip. 
This will alert the cashier that there is a multiple item that they have to calculate. You do no calculations. Please remember to circle the multiple and put a star on top. This is very important. Put the items into the shopping bag and staple the gold slip to the left-hand corner of the bag for storing alphabetically in a bin for later pickup. If you're working Friday setup, make sure your booth has two plastic bins for organizing purchases. If you think you might need more, you can ask your block captain who will be wearing a yellow apron for some large cardboard boxes. The best way to organize the purchases is in alphabetical order by last name in the bins. This makes pickup quick and efficient. Hand the white, yellow, and pink slips to the customer and remind them to return in three hours. You can recommend that they do all their shopping at the different booths, collect all their slips, and then visit the cashier at one time. It should make things easier for the customer. The cashier will keep the white sales slip. When the customer returns to your booth to pick up their purchase, make sure their yellow slip is marked paid. Match it to the gold slip on the bag and hand the bag to the customer. It's always a good idea to have the customers take a quick look into their bag to confirm that the items are correct before leaving. Place the yellow slip into the large plastic baggie marked Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. AAs who work the last shift of each day should try to put the yellow slips in the bag in numerical order. You can find the sales slip numbers on the right upper corner of the sales slip. This will be helpful to the artist at closeout. At the end of the day, the artist should take the baggie with the yellow slips with them when they leave the market. Remember, these yellow sales slips are like cash. This is how your artist will get paid. If you need to cancel a sales slip, just write void and place all four copies in the baggie with the yellow slips. If a customer doesn't return to pick up the purchase, write did not pick up on the gold slip and put it in the baggie with the other yellow slips. It's also possible that a runner from a cashier might bring a voided slip back to your booth with an unwanted product. <clears throat> Just put the slip in the baggie and return the product to inventory. Artists can choose to discount after 1 o'clock on Sunday. Please note this is one hour earlier than last year. Colored discount signs will be in the plastic booth box for you to use and post the discount percentage. Calculate the discounted price only on the sales slip. This year, there will be a new concierge service piloted at the market. A concierge shopper will pay for the service that's good for the entire weekend. <clears throat> it will enable them to have a runner pick up their purchases and to pay for their purchases at the concierge service area, which is in the Botanical Garden parking lot. Concierge shoppers will be wearing a badge with a clearly marked concierge number. You can see on this badge the number is 201. Here's how it will work. If the shopper says he or she is part of the concierge program, the AA will do the following. Step one, fill out the sales forms as usual. Do not tear them out from the book yet. 
place the sales book to the side so you can refer to it and take a green concierge flag. It is handy to have your calculator and a pile of green concierge flags ready next to your sales slip book. Write on the top of the green flag the name of the shopper and the shopper's concierge number. On the bottom of the flag, the AA writes the shopper's name, the shopper's concierge number, and the receipt number. Note the receipt number and sales slip number are the same thing. Next, the AA writes the total amount spent. You can use the calculator in your booth box for this purpose. Please carefully calculate any multiples on your sales slip. Please note this is the only time, I repeat, only time an AA will total the amount on a sales slip. Totals are only made for a concierge customer on the bottom of the green flag. Now you can tear out the sales slips. As usual, attach the gold sales slip to the left corner of the shopping bag and hand the rest of the slips to the concierge customer. Next, tear off the perforated top portion of the green flag. The green flag top portion gets stapled onto the right corner of the shopping bag. Please have it stick up and be very visible so that concierge runners can spot it quickly. The runners will be wearing neon green vests. The bottom portion of the green flag is placed in the large yellow baggie with the other yellow sales slips. This is very important since the bottom of the green flag will be the record of the sale for the artist. Try to put all your concierge shopper purchases together in one portion of your alphabetized purchase pickup area. It will speed pickup. Concierge runners will frequently pass through the booths picking up all the purchases with green flags. The runners will bring them to a central concierge service area where they will be organized and paid for. After the customer pays for their purchase at the concierge tent, the runner will return the yellow sales slip marked paid to the booth and hand it to the AA who will exchange it for the green card in the plastic receipt baggie. Let me repeat that. After the customer pays for their purchase at the concierge tent, the runner will return the yellow sales slip marked paid to the booth and hand it to the AA who will exchange it for the green card in the plastic receipt baggie. If for some reason toward the end of the shift you see a concierge purchase that has not been picked up, please notify your block captain or you can call the concierge line to tell them you need a pickup. The number will be in the artist assistant information booklet that you will find in your booth box. Remember that this year the concierge service is very, very small, only 100 shoppers. So each booth may only have a few concierge items for pickup by concierge runners. You can always contact your block captain if you have questions. Thanks so much to all of you. I'm now going to turn it back to Jennifer and wish all of you good luck at this year's market. Enjoy, and I hope to see you at the market. Great. Thank you so much, Deborah. So now I'm just going to cover some general information um, about things to know, um, both as artists, assistants, and volunteers generally. 
So this year at the market, we have an expanded uh, program or schedule of children's programs on Sunday, July 16th. Um, the heart of that programming, though, is still our children's passport program. So children will be coming around to the booth with their little passport books, and you may be involved as the artist assistant in giving them flags for the artist country uh, who you're working for that they can put into those little passport books. So I just wanted to alert you that if you're working on Sunday, that could be happening. Um, there will be no cash in your booth. And there should be no cash transactions in your booth whatsoever, and the artists also are very well aware of that rule. Um, do not leave your booth if things are slow. Please check in with a block captain if things seem really slow to you, and they may reassign you or they may ask you to hang out um, depending on how many um, other needs they have in other booths. Um, and so uh, just don't pick up and leave if you think things are slow. Please check in with your be your block captain before you do anything different. Um, if it rains, use the plastic sheets provided in the booth box to cover the artwork. There are also clamps in there, as Deborah mentioned, to cover the artwork. Um, the only time you should ever put down the sides of the large tents that you're in is if you can't prote protect the products with the plastic sheeting. Um, once the tent sides are down, they're very difficult to get back up. And so um, we prefer that you only put them down as a last resort to protect the artist products. Uh, do not get involved in pricing. This is mostly relevant for people who are working booth setup on Friday morning. Um, the pricing is predetermined by our selection committee with the artists. Um, and there have been stories about artist assistants arguing about what the pricing should be. You should absolutely not do that and not get involved at all in that conversation. Uh, please help pack up if you're working Sunday evening before you leave. And one thing I want to say about that um, is if you're waiting for someone to pick up packages on Friday night or you're on Sunday night you're staying to help, pick, to help the artist clean up, um, do not worry about missing the volunteer shuttle. I personally give the all clear to our transportation company for the volunteer shuttle. I walk the site before I give that all clear. So you are not going to miss the shuttle back to the parking lot. Um, and if you happen to be in the bathroom or something when I walk the site, um, trust me, we will get you back to the Montoya lot. So please don't let fears about uh, missing the shuttle. Um, keep you from helping to clean up or making sure that all the packages are picked up in your booth before you go or return to the artist inventory. You're going to be emailed um, a copy of the artist assistant guide before the market begins, so look for that email from me. Um, so you can download it if you would like and take a look at it. <clears throat> you don't have to do that. There will be one in your booth box when you arrive at market. Some general reminders, um, please be sure you're arriving on the hill 30 minutes ahead of your shift. Um, you may need to still pick up your badge and t-shirt if you haven't done that ahead of time. You may have to go through a security check. So what this really means is that you need to be in the volunteer shuttle lot at the Montoya building, which is at the corner of St. Francis and Cordova, 60 minutes before your shift starts. So that allows enough time for the ride to the hill, for you to pick up coffee or some food in the volunteer tent on your way to your booth and to arrive at your booth on time. Please bring sunscreen um, or a hat or an umbrella for sun protection. Um, maybe bring rain gear. Uh, it does rain frequently at the market. It didn't last year, but that doesn't mean it won't. Um, bring a water bottle. Um, there are water stations for you to fill it up at, and the water team will be coming around to the booth. And if you have special dietary needs, um, please bring food. As I mentioned, there will be food delivery to the tents, but if you have a lot of food allergies and things, you probably should pack some of your own things to get you through your shift. Personal items can go under your artist's table um, in the booth. You cannot leave personal items or backpacks in the volunteer tent, in the volunteer hospitality tent. If you do that, they will be turned into the information booth to the lost and found. Um, for more detailed parking information um, for Thursday, July 13th through Market Weekend, please go to our website at folkartalliance.org. Under the Volunteer tab, you'll find a whole page about volunteer parking. You can download the volunteer parking flyer there. Or if you're in shift board, go to the news page and the volunteer parking flyer is also there. And that will give, all, give you all the details that you need. 
Um, you must ride the volunteer shuttle um, to get your badge if you haven't picked it up before coming to the hill. You will not be able to get in the front gate without your badge starting at 5 p.m. on Friday. So make sure that if you're trying to get into the front of the gate that you have your badge on. Um, when you do that, otherwise take the volunteer shuttle which drops you off at the back of the market um, right at the volunteer tent where we have badges and t-shirts. Your badge gets you in free to the market from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Saturday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. So if you're not working as a volunteer, you're welcome to come during those hours and shop, and we certainly hope that you will do that. T-shirt and badge pickup times are as follows. Um, in Albuquerque, we're going to do T-shirt pickup only on Friday, July 7th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Domingo Baca Community Center. And in Santa Fe, we will do both T-shirts and badges on Thursday, July 13th from 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Southwest Annex at the Santa Fe University of Art and Design. And you will get another email about those dates. With the, with the specific addresses. Um, you do not need to wear your t-shirt or your badge to ride the volunteer shuttle, so that enables you to wait and pick up your t-shirt and badge once you arrive on Museum Hill, if needed. So a little more about transportation. Um, the parking flyer officially says that service from the Montoya building will start at 430 but um, I'm letting you know that the buses will actually be there at 4 p.m. on Friday because the shifts mostly start at 5 p.m. Um, so know that if you're there at 4, um, you will be able to load the bus. Um, they will start at 5.30 a.m. on Saturday and 7 a.m. on Sunday. And again, that's at the Montoya building at the corner of St. Francis and Cordova, same place that the volunteer shuttle has operated out of for many years. Uh, you also have the option to bike to Museum Hill. We're going to have enhanced bike valet service on Saturday and Sunday. Um, they will be there as early as humanly possible. Stephen tells me that someone always beats him there, so if you do beat, beat him to the bike valet service, which is at the front of the market, at the front gate, so that means you need your badge to get in, um, they will be there, um, hopefully starting as early as 6.30 or 7 on Saturday and 7 or 7.30 on Sunday. Friday night, there's no bike valet service, but you can bike to the hill, and there's going to be a bike rack in the back of the market by the volunteer tent, so you can lock your bike up there, so be sure to bring a lock. You can also Uber to the hill this year. There's going to be a drop-off point um, at the front of house, which means it's towards the front gate of the market, but if you do that, um, or if you bike, again, you need to have your badge before you can walk in the front gate of the market after 5 p.m. on Friday. So with that, let's go to question and answer. Give me a second here to stop sharing my screen. I always have this problem. See, there's a couple of people in the chat. Okay, let's start with the chat here. Just looking through the questions here. What color are the t-shirts? The t-shirts are turquoise. And we're going to get a picture up on the Facebook page. I'm sorry, that just hasn't happened yet, but we will get a picture up. Um, if you couldn't hear us very well, that probably was a problem on your own computer, so refer to the Artist Assistant Guide that we're going to send out. Um, Someone's very happy about the concierge service. So if you want to sign up, you can go to our website um, and do that. Um, yeah, the t-shirts are turquoise blue. Not navy blue, not royal blue, turquoise blue. And I will get a picture up on Facebook. I'm sorry, it's been a crazy week of training sessions. Um, you can pick up the t-shirts again at Santa Fe University of Art and Design. Um, I covered that. Um, we will remind you again. Um, <laughs> it 
Someone says they look good in turquoise also. <laughs> I'm very happy to hear that. Um, so if I'm meeting someone who is not a volunteer before my shift, do they need to take a regular bus and connect at the festival? Yes, they do need to take a regular um, bus. So if you are in Santa Fe, you can pick up your t-shirts at Santa Fe University of Art and Design on July 13th between 8.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, and so we will, um, we will be there those hours. I will also be sending an email to you um, about that. So let's see, are there any more questions? Just looking to see if there are any more questions. Probably we have answered just about everything. So one thing to clarify, um, if you are coming into Santa Fe from out of town to volunteer, um, you either need to get yourself to that volunteer shuttle lot at the corner of Cordova and St. Francis. And probably the way you're going to do that if you're not driving to Santa Fe is that you're going to take an Uber. Our last taxi service in Santa Fe um, just closed. And so um, we will be, uh, you won't be able to call a taxi, so to speak, but you can call an Uber um, or there's also Lyft in Santa Fe to get you to the volunteer lot. Or as I said, you can um, take an Uber right to Museum Hill, or you can bike, or if you're really close, you can walk. Um, and so just to clarify those things, and I'm clearing out the messages here. Okay, so let's see, what else do we have here? Is there a way to text block captains to find them? Yeah, you can kind of ask them that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, some of them will be using cell phones and some of them don't. So they're supposed to come around at the start of their shift, of, of your shift, and introduce themselves. Um, so you can ask them if they want to give out their cell phone numbers. They're really going to be roaming up and down the block, so you shouldn't need a phone to reach them. Um, should we text the customer before returning the items? Yes. So you can call them on the cell phone number or text them. In some ways, texting them is better because there can be a lot of noise at the market. So unless they have their phone on vibrate, they may not actually hear it ring. So text is um, a fairly safe bet, and almost everybody is texting these days. So feel free to do that. Um, if you put an alligator clip in the receipt baggie, we can clip together all the ones. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know if there's going to be an alligator clip in your baggie. Um, someone else handles that, so you can dig through that little box and see what you've got. Um, would you be able to give AAs an additional Ziploc bag? No, the instruction is that the green flags go in the same baggie as the yellow receipt. So don't worry about that. Um, just put them in the same baggie. Um, and keep in mind there'll be a baggie for each day. Um, can we have someone pick up t-shirts for us if we can get, cannot get to Santa Fe before 5 p.m. Friday? That's actually not necessary because we'll be giving out t-shirts and badges all weekend in the volunteer tent. So if you don't arrive until Sunday afternoon for your volunteer shift, you can get your t-shirt and badge um, at the volunteer tent anytime you arrive at market between 7 a.m. Friday morning and 5 p.m. Sunday night. But we hope you're going to be there well before. 5 p.m. Friday, because by that time, of course, you will have missed your shift. Um, yes, we will be sending out a recording of the webinar. Um, are there different t-shirts and badges for artist assistants? No, all volunteers wear the same t-shirts and get the same kind of badge. Um, staff have a different uh, t-shirt but the volunteers all have the same one. So let's see. Um, there's a question, do you want the receipts organized in bunches? We used to put them in stacks of 20. Um, I, we have not been given that instruction at all this year. You don't need to worry about that. The, the request is that you put them in numerical order um, each day at the end of the day. So you don't need to worry about putting them in bunches of 20. Okay? 
Let's see, do we have more questions here? Yes, that the volunteer shuttle for the 5 p.m. Friday shift will be leaving from the Montoya building parking lot. Yes, that's true, and they will be there at 4, even though the parking flyer says 4.30. Officially, because it's a government building, we're not supposed to be there till a little later, but I can promise you that the shuttle service will be there at 4. Uh, what day is the parade and how do we volunteer for that? Um, we actually have all the volunteers we need, but we definitely encourage you to come to that event. It's called the Artist Procession and Community Celebration. It's Thursday, July 13th. It starts at 6 p.m. It's downtown on the Santa Fe Plaza. So we um, encourage you to get there early. It's the artist's official welcome to Santa Fe. And so um, it's a really cool event. There's going to be a bunch of kids involved this year, as well as some dragons that they've been building out at Miala for the procession. So definitely join us for that. Thursday, July 13th um, at 6 p.m. on the Santa Fe Plaza downtown. Okay. That seems to be um, all of the questions. So I will be sending out, um, we'll be uploading a recording to YouTube, and then we will be sending you guys the link to that. So hopefully, um, if you miss something or the sound on your computer wasn't coming through, you'll be able to watch that recording as a refresher. And then remember, I also will be emailing out the Artist Assistant Guide so you can take a look at almost everything that we covered in writing. Um, if you have other questions, please visit our website, folkartalliance.org. Go to the Volunteer tab, and there's a page there about parking. You can download the parking flyer information, um, which covers from Thursday through Sunday of market. And then there's also a frequently asked questions page there for volunteers where hopefully most of your other questions can be answered. So thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at the market. Thanks so much.